Well, you guys know from my previous video that I'm really excited about starting a worm bin. And for those of you who aren't familiar with a worm bin, here's what it is. I'll have a bin full of kitchen scraps, shredded up newspaper, and we'll add some worms. The worms eat through all that and compost it and provide me with the most nutrient dense fertilizer on the planet called worm castings or worm poop. Now here's why I'm excited about it. Number one, I want to get that nutrient dense fertilizer from the worms onto my garden. Number two, it eats through, they eat through my kitchen scraps, which is an awesome way to use those up. Number three, they'll eat through all my shredded up newspaper and paper that I would normally just throw away. And number four, it is cheap to produce. Just the cost of the worms to get started. So today we're going to build my worm bin. Let's go and we'll show you how I'm going to do it. Okay, the first thing you're going to need is two Rubbermaid bins with lids. I found these around my house. They actually had old Christmas things in them that I went through and threw away. Totally free. Okay, the next thing we need after our bin, our two bins, is a drill with a 1 8 inch drill bit, or as close to 1 8 inch as you can get. We're going to use this in the construction of our bin. We also need two supports for um, the bottom of our bin. And I just had two little pots sitting around. You can use whatever you want, bricks, empty milk cartons, just use what you have. So we're gonna get started now on the construction of our bin and I'm gonna get my son to help me with this. So well, I wanna make this a family project, so I brought my son along today to help me with the construction of the bin. Now, there's many ways you can build a worm bin. What I'm doing is just one way. And the, the ideas I got on how to build this is from a website called redwormcomposting.com. So look that up, he's got a lot of fabulous ideas on there. But like I said, there's many different ways this is just one way. So first we're going to start by drilling some holes in the, one of the bins. Now worms definitely need some air. So your bins do need to be opaque. They don't want to, you don't want to have clear see-through bins because worms don't like light. They also need some air. So what we're going to do with our drill, hang on a second, is we're, we've got our 1 8 inch drill bit here. You don't want it to be too big because then the worms will climb through. So we have a very small drill bit on here. And I'm going to have my son here drill about seven holes on each side and about three on each end. You want about 10 to 20 holes all over your worm bin along the top to give your worms some air. So you can go ahead and drill a hole right about there. Watch your fingers though. There you go. There we go. All the way through. Perfect. Okay, so you can drill about seven holes all along here. So go ahead and do that. And then we're gonna get that, all the holes drilled along the sides and also uh, several holes in the lid. And then we'll come back and show you the next step. We've got our, all of our holes drilled around the sides of the worm bin. Now we're gonna drill holes in the lid because once again, they are gonna need oxygen. We're gonna drill, so we're gonna drill holes in the lid and in the bottom. So go ahead, go ahead and drill some holes in the lid here. You do the same thing, maybe just 10 or 15 holes in the lid, just kind of randomly. Whoops. Drill it as you back it up. There you go. Okay, slow down a little bit. There we go. A few more on this side. Okay, now we're going to drill some holes in the bottom, and this is mainly for drainage. We don't want everything getting real soggy and, and bogged down in there. So these holes here on the bottom, we're going to drill in the corners. There we go. And this is what's going to help the additional moisture drain out of our worm bin. And maybe a couple in the middle. You don't need a whole bunch in the bottom. Okay, there we go. Okay, we've got our first bin all ready to go. We've got all the holes drilled. Now, we can always go back later and drill more holes if we feel like our bin is getting too soggy. Okay, and we'll get to that again in just a moment. But what we're gonna do is, we're gonna set this bin inside of the second bin here. And the reason why we do that is because this bin will catch anything that drains off of our bin with the holes in it. And we can use that liquid that drains off, which we will be full of nutrients to water our garden. So we definitely do not want to waste that. So we're going to use these for supports to set one bin on top of the other. So we're going to go ahead and put those in the corners diagonal. And then we're just going to go ahead and set this bin. You can go ahead and do that now. Just set this bin right inside. 
And there you go. This is basically our worm bin construction all finished. All we need now is to add our materials to the bin. So okay, so here's the materials we're going to fill our bin with. We've got some shredded up paper, and this is amazing. It's just my junk mail that I put through a paper shredder. Now, and also some egg cartons. You can also use cardboard. You can use paper plates. You can use basically any trash that you find around your house, with the exception of you do not want to use colored paper. You don't want to use like those slick ads or whatever that come in the newspaper, but you can definitely use a newspaper. That's great for a worm bin. But I had all this shredded paper, and I have tons more of it, but this is just what I shredded up to fit in this bin. So we've got our shredded up paper. We've got our kitchen scraps, which I've got a couple of bins here I've been saving just for this purpose. We've got some garden soil and some coffee grounds, which we'll put in there too. Now we're ready to fill our bin. So you're going to help me fill this, okay? Okay. All right, take, let's take off the lid. Basically, we're just going to layer these materials. Now, there's a couple different ways you can do this. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to layer these materials with the kitchen scraps and then just let them sit for about a week or two. Let them ferment. Let all the kitchen scraps soak into the newspaper to get the newspaper, the paper shreds nice and wet. And then we'll be ready to add our worms. So you do not want to order your worms or purchase your worms until your worm bin is completely ready. Because once you get them, you need to be able to add them right away. So we're just doing step one today, preparing our worm bin. Okay, so let's go ahead and put all this paper, not all of it, but layer some on the bottom. Okay, why don't you help me do that? Put a little layer on the bottom. Okay, that's probably good for now. So I'm going to fluff it up. Can you help me fluff it up? Okay, there you go. You don't want it too compacted. And then we're going to sprinkle in some of this lovely kitchen scraps. It's already been fermenting in my refrigerator for a couple of weeks. So the worms love the bacteria on this stuff. That's basically what they're looking for as they eat. So let's sprinkle a little bit of this in there. You probably don't want to touch it, right? So here, you can use the garden shovel to kind of scrape some in. Let's put a little bit, kind of spread it around a little. There we go. Some more on this side. This stuff actually was in my freezer. <laughs> Woo, got a big chunk there. <laughs> so um, it's still kind of frozen, but this will moisten the paper as it ferments. Okay, let's put some more paper in on top of that. Might even have too much paper here. I might have to save it for the next Another time. One. Okay, there we go. Okay, you can go ahead and add some more kitchen scraps. Now, some people like to chop up their kitchen scraps into small pieces. Personally, that's just an extra step that I don't want to have to deal with. So I'm going to try adding them all whole. We'll see how, how it goes, how the worms like it. Okay, got those. The worms are going to be loving this once they get here. All right, so let's add another layer of kitchen scraps. I mean, uh, paper. Here you go, just grab some, throw it in there. Okay, good. And we'll throw in the rest of these kitchen scraps. There you go. You want these to be good and soaked. So hopefully within a week or so, all this will soak that paper really nicely for the worms. They like the moisture. We're also going to throw in some coffee grounds because worms don't have tea. So the coffee grounds give it a little bit of, um, I don't know, texture to it so they can grind, it helps with the grinding action. So I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle those in there. There you go, just sprinkle them all around. That's good. And the filters too are good to throw in. And we'll throw in a little bit of garden soil too. You don't want to throw in too much garden soil, but we'll just throw in a little bit. And I'm going to finish it off here with this layer of egg cartons. Okay, I got some more egg cartons in here. We can finish off with a layer of egg cartons and a little bit more shredded paper. Not too much shredded paper on top. Okay. All right, we're gonna finish it off by just spraying down the top layer to get it moist. We can get this to come out here once you finish off with that. Get that top layer nice and moist. And we're going to let this sit for one to two weeks before we add the worms. Now let me talk just briefly about the worms that I'm going to add. You don't just go out and dig in your garden and, buy and um, use your regular earthworms from your garden. These are special composting worms. 
They don't, they're not earthworms, they don't live in the dirt, but they're particularly good at chewing all this up and making that wonderful nutrient dense worm poop that we want for our garden. So I'm trying to find a local source. If I don't find a local source here, I'm gonna be ordering from um, a source online, but I'm working on that over the next week. Once we get our worms, we're gonna come back and add those and show you guys um, how they look in here in this worm bin and how they do. So thanks a lot for, for helping me today. Thanks for coming along with me. And I would just encourage you, build a worm bin along with me. Get your materials, look around the house and see what you have that you can build a worm bin with and we'll do this together and have some great nutrient dense worm poop for our gardens this spring. Thanks a lot for watching.